This is Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia for the 100th edition of a bitter rivalry known as the Backyard Brawl. Welcome to Jimmy V Week on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation for Cancer Research in tribute to Jim Valvano and his dream to defeat cancer. Tonight from Morgantown, West Virginia, it's the Pitt Panthers against the nation's second-ranked team, the West Virginia Mountaineers, and their shot at a national championship game. sometimes up to as many as four options. He's also got a beautiful passing touch, 69% completions on the season, 12 touchdowns, four interceptions. But his calling card is breakaway speed. It's the kind of speed that even if he guesses wrong and makes a bad decision, he can outrun his mistake. Over the last month of the season, nobody has played better football than Pat White. Well, for Pitt, losing its quarterback and its best receiver at the start of the season sort of set the tone for everything. They still have talent. The question is, do they have a shot tonight? They have a shot, but they've got to do a couple things really well. Number one, they've got to run the football with LaShawn McCoy, their freshman tailback. They must tackle well in space. They're a good defensive football team, but they'll be challenged tonight, and they must knock the ball loose because when West Virginia has struggled, it's been because of turnovers. They lost one game to South Florida, six turnovers. Two close games, six turnovers. The other eight games, only six turnovers altogether, and they blew their opponents out. Pitt has a chance, but they must do those things well. It's a sellout crowd at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. More than 60,000, most of them dressed in gold. And the Mountaineers come out wearing those gold uniforms. the intensity of this rivalry and what's at stake somebody's going to stage quite a celebration tonight But in the last 15 meetings, West Virginia has dominated. And the Mountaineers won last year, rolling up a lot of total offense and 45-27 final score. Number two teams have not fared well this season is the ranking curse. We'll find out tonight. Todd has his Heisman ballot. Pat White's on it. Where does he rank? And, of course, the culinary tour continues from Morgantown with Todd's Taste of the Town. What's your prediction for the Holly Rowe works the sidelines for us. Let's go to her right now. 
Well, guys, it's very sweet irony that tonight, to get to the national championship game, West Virginia has to go through a backyard brawl because the coaches have used the analogy all season that this season was like a 12-round championship fight. Some of the players got these cards that says, West Virginia Pitt, it's just round 12 to help them keep their focus. And the motto the players came up with, no excuses, no regrets, speaks to the kind of focus they need to have tonight. Rich Rodriguez told me moments before the game that he has been pleased with their focus. He said, in fact, we were supposed to leave the hotel at 515. Players were on the bus ready to go at 445. They were also about a half an hour early for their pregame meal. Guys, they are hungry to get to that championship game. The weather could get interesting. It's already 31 and falling. The wind's out of the northeast at 6 with the light rain. We are expecting freezing rain and sleet later this evening. Pitt will get the ball first. Robinson on the return. Across the 25, 30. Fighting for extra yardage goes down at the 33. It's the backyard brawl. A couple of mixed martial arts fighters will introduce our teams. First, here's Matt Hughes. Pittsburgh offense. Lightning quick running back LaShawn McCoy loves taking it to the house. So much so that he rushed for 14 touchdowns this year, the most ever by a Pitt freshman. Yes, even more so than legendary Tony Dorsett. McCoy's bodyguard is fullback Condridge Collins, who likes to clean house. Up front, you got to deal with the 315-pound guard, Mike McGlynn, who had surgery on his shoulder earlier this year. That just made him mad. Pat Bostic, one of three freshman quarterbacks starting in the country, hands it off to McCoy, makes a nice move on the corner, faked out Antonio Lewis and picked up a couple of more yards. To tell us about the West Virginia defense, here's George St. Pierre. The Montana's defense is ready to brawl with a quarterback worst nightmare. Defense and Johnny Dingle. At linebackers, keep both eyes on Mark Magro. Magro, they call him MOD, M-O-D. That's short for Mark of Destruction. At safety, Eric Wink. And he's all about that stick on anyone coming over the middle. <laughs> <laughs> These two guys are going to fight for a world championship, so don't say anything. 76, dead ball, personal foul, number 92, penalties offset, first down. Can't even get one play, no, and one they're play. at it. One play, Jeff Ota, the left tackle, Johnny Dingle, just getting to know each other a little bit. Just <laughs> saying hello, that's how you do it in the backyard brawl. Send me a card instead, will you? <laughs> but that first play is exactly what Pitt wants to do. The best way to defend West Virginia's offense is to not have your defense be on the field very much. Run the football, possess the ball. McCoy is the deep man in the eye. And Bostic is going to throw. Loops it downfield and it's picked off by Antonio Lewis. The pass underthrown and Lewis has a convo. Midfield. 40. And out of bounds at the pit 29 yard line. Cedric McGee made the tackle a 47 yard return. Well, I understand that you want to loosen the defense up a little bit, but if you're going to throw it deep, you need to throw it deep and you need to throw it outside. That ball was neither, it was underthrown and it was too far inside. And Antonio Lewis had a better play on the ball than the receiver. Turnovers have really hurt Pitt this season. I mean, their defense has played pretty well, but that now the 23rd turnover of the season for the Pitt offense, most of them earlier in the year. Mountaineers set up shop already in Pitt territory at the 27. Pat White with Slayton and Devine split. And Noel Devine, the diminutive freshman, will get the first carry. To tell us about the Mountaineer offense, here's George St. Pierre. If you're going to get catch up in the backyard brawl, you need a guy like fullback Owen Smith on your side. He's a physical freak and a legend in the weight room. And he's got a great haircut. In the trench, you got to love a guy like tackle Ryan Stanchek. He paid his dues washing dishes, and bussing table. Now, he just pancake defensive lineman, and he doesn't have to clean up afterwards. 
That's a great line. <laughs> and he does. Stanchek is a terrific offensive lineman. Scott McKillop makes the tackle as White goes up the middle. You will hear McKillop's name all night long. He is a tackling machine in the middle of that pit defense, and they pride themselves on their ability to tackle. Well, you must tackle well against these guys because they have so much speed and they put so much pressure on you in space that if you don't tackle well, you get gashed very easily. Schmidt is now in there with Slayton in the backfield. White on the keeper. To Schmidt, the big guy to the 10. First down, West Virginia. They broke that tendency. We saw them two weeks ago in Cincinnati. They did the same thing. Instead of faking inside to Schmidt and pitching outside to Slayton, they did the other thing. Here they're going to read this man. Nobody's out there with Schmidt. Pat White, again, makes the right decision most of the time, but they change their tendencies by using Schmidt as the pitch man instead of the dive back. And Schmidt at 260 strikes fear into secondaries. First and goal, West Virginia. This is the last thing Pitt needed was to give the Mountaineers the football down here. Devine grabbed around the ankle and brought down Adam Gunn, the strong side linebacker. Nice play. One of the things that we're going to see, I think, more tonight and then when West Virginia, wherever they play in January, we'll see more of as well, and that is the combination of Noel Devine and Steve Slayton in the backfield together. Now, Schmidt is back in now, but last week, Noel Devine played more than he'd play all season, had 11 carries against UConn. That is going to make this offense even more dangerous, those two speed guys on the field at the same time. Second and goal. White fakes to Slayton, keeps it himself straight up the middle, but dives forward to the six. And McKillop, again, was there to make the tackle. He replaced H.B. Blades, the All-American the Panthers had starting in the middle a year ago. We'll take a look at what Pat White has done over the last four games, throwing and running. All four games, he's been well over 100 yards rushing, and he has just put this team on his shoulders and, and just carried them to this point in the season. Third and goal. White wants to throw. There's that quick little spin. Schmidt trying to throw the block on the corner. Really nice play defensively by Jameel Brady, number sure 24. Was. Jameel Brady was in there, and uh, it looked like Pat White might turn the corner on this bootleg. His receivers were covered, but Jameel Brady let go of Owen Schmidt and went for the tackle. He didn't allow Schmidt to turn on him and block him and secure the corner for Pat White. The home crowd wanted West Virginia to go for it, but they'll send on the field goal team for the reliable Pat McAfee, who has missed only twice this year, his first one and his last one. Terrific two-way threat as a kicker. This will be a 20-yard attempt, basically an offset extra point. This would be a win for the Panthers. Absolutely. Defense. Absolutely. You keep West Virginia out of the end zone, you've done your job. I think they're going to let this clock go out so they can back it up a little bit more for McAfee. I, I think they did that on purpose to give them a little better angle on this field goal attempt. Rich Rodriguez, who has had unprecedented success here in Morgantown. Four Big East titles in the last five years. And now he's right at the very pinnacle of his coaching success with a chance to go to a national championship game with a win tonight. And Pitt does the smart yeah. thing. They decline the penalty, yep, so they'll have to kick from this angle. Missed it. And McAfee wide left. I think that got in his head a little bit. You know, they call timeout or they try to take the penalty. They try to, to get a better angle. That's in his head. He hasn't missed hardly any this whole season. I mean, he's had an excellent season. 11 for 13 before this kick. You said it should have been just a little chip shot. And that one was left all the way. So good job by Dave Wanstead declining the penalty. 
And making him kick from the same spot and a huge stop by the Pitt defense. And if Pitt wants to pull the upset, this is exactly the kind of thing that has to happen yep. for them tonight. Dave Wanstad in his third year of an original five-year contract, he just got a new contract extension today from Steve Peterson, the new athletic director who was hired after he was let go by Nebraska. Yeah. The former Pitt athletic director comes back for his second tour and gives Dave Wanstead a contract extension through 2012. I saw Steve Peterson down on the field before the game in his Pitt jacket and said, it's been an interesting week for you, I guess. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Collins is the blocking back from McCoy. You bet they'll go back to the ground game. West Virginia very good against the run this year. McCoy got maybe a yard. For more on Dave Wanstead, here's Holly. Well, guys, you see Coach Wanstead on the sideline on crutches. He tore his Achilles heel tendon halfway through the season. He's had surgery, but we talked to him before the game. He said he can actually walk on that boot, but if he stands for too long, it really swells up, so he uses the crutches to take the pressure off the foot. He said he's ahead of rehab schedule. Things are going great. He had a great attitude about it, and he said he's got some good blocking people on the sideline. If the play comes that way, he's not worried about getting hit. Well, he'll need them, Holly. Last thing you want to do with that injury is get banged again. Single setback is LaShawn McCoy, a thousand yard rusher. They throw it out in the flat and it's right on the ground. They're going to say it was complete, but for no gain as Porter made the catch. Well, this Pitt football team, uh, again, they're a pretty good defensive team, but offensively, they have struggled. And you look at what they've done in their opening possessions. Only one time they even crossed midfield, of course, had the interception on their first possession tonight. But this is their third quarterback. They started the season with Bill Stahl, who was a junior. They were really excited about him. He got hurt in the opening game. Then they went to Kevin Smith. And now Pat Bostick, the true freshman from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, is the guy. And they're just kind of trying to protect him as much as possible. And they'll go on the draw play, a very conservative call on third and long. And West Virginia sniffs it out. Well, that interception on his first throw uh, helps to be more conservative yes, when does. you're calling plays on the road. I mean, you, you want your quarterback to get a feel for the game and get comfortable, and that first throw was not a good throw by Pat Boston. We'll check the penalty call on this play. Pitt with its second possession of the ball game. We have two fouls on a play. Both dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. Number 14 on the offense. Unsportsmanlike. Number 19 on the defense. Penalties offset. Fourth down. Well, that's Daryl Strong, the tight end, and Vaughn Rivers, the defensive back. So they're already mixing it up a couple of times. You want to mix martial artist, the punter, Dave Brightus. He is 230 pounds. This is a big kid who can yeah. take care of himself. I usually, Rivers is deep. And I usually can be kind of tough on kickers. I'm going <laughs> to be careful what I say about that. Absolutely. Players. Left footer gets one out of there. Rivers hates fair catches, but can't come up to get that one. And West Virginia will take over at its own 41. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did it hit West, West Virginia? Virginia. They're signaling it's West Virginia ball. Well, Pitt is not the officials. Right. And they're going to say it was touched by one of the Panthers oh, yeah. before it hit a Mountaineer. 36-yard kick and no return. We've got a timeout on the field. Scoreless. First quarter. West Virginia in Pitt in the backyard brawl number 100. ESPN's College Football Primetime is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. West Virginia will take over from its own 42 yard line. One thing Pitt has been able to do is quiet the crowd here early. White on the keeper behind Slayton, not much. Well, if you have been ranked number two this year, 
it has indeed been a curse. People have had targets on their back. Nine different teams have been ranked number two in the last 11 weeks, and they're two and sixth since the first weekend in October. Five losses to unranked team. That's a stretch that I think is totally unprecedented in college football. Schmidt back in the lineup. This is Slayton on the toss. What a grab. Caught it like it was a softball. Still lost some yardage for the Panther defense. Here's the introduction from Matt Hughes. When Pitt's Panthers cross the West Virginia border to brawl, senior defensive end Joel Claremont leads the charge. Crossing the border in the opponent's backfields time after time. And middle linebacker Scott McPhillip is everywhere. He leads the entire nation in tackles this season. In the secondary, Eric Thatcher at 5'9", 195, pound for pound, he'll just hurt you. That white flanker screen. Nothing doing to Jock Sanders. The freshman had some blocking, but it broke down, and McKillop is there again. McKillop's on every play. He is. You know, we looked at his numbers. You say, okay, the guy, 142 tackles, 18 tackles last week against South Florida. Are those numbers inflated? Because, you know, it's, it's not a real standard process all around college football, sure. how they count tackles. I flipped the film on and watched this guy, and about in the first 12 plays, he had six tackles or seven tackles. I said, you know what? I think this guy's numbers are pretty legit because he does fly around, and when he gets there, he makes good tackles. He barely played for two years because he was behind H.B. Blades. McAfee is in to kick. West Virginia does so much with its punting formation, and Aaron Berry will return, and McAfee just killed another one. 54 yards, but it bounced the wrong way and went into the end zone for him. Tonight, Colt Brennan and number 12, Hawaii, undefeated, by the way. Try to keep that the same way and a chance at a BCS bowl game alive as they host Washington in the final regular season game of the college football season. College football primetime presented by GoDaddy.com on ESPN2 tonight at 11.30 Eastern. And I think his chance to win the Heisman is just destroyed by the fact that he plays yeah. in Hawaii or, all, or on the West Coast. Nobody ever gets to see the kid play. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's certainly the dark horse, but he's a legit quarterback. And watching him play a couple times, he can really throw the football. McCoy on the toss sweep, blocking in front, cuts it back. The first freshman to have a thousand yards since Tony Dorsett. McGlynn was pulling and threw a good block for him. He played at Bishop McDevitt High School in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Was a highly recruited kid coming out of high school. And he had an injury in his senior year of high school. I mean, he was going to somewhere outside of the state of Pennsylvania. He was going to commit it to Miami. He was heading there. He had visited USC, some places like that. And then after the injury, he had to go to Milford Academy in New York. And he had to rehab the injury. And Ended up at Pitt, and he is uh, he's the real deal now. I mean, he's a legitimate big-time back. Kind of guy you can build an offense around. He makes great cuts. But that time, West Virginia swarms to the ball on running plays very, very well. Keelan Dykes, the nose guard, made the tackle on that one. Dykes is a good one. West he and Johnny Dingle can yeah. play the run. Yeah, they can. And, and West Virginia, over the last couple of years, has really been good against the run. They're not an overly big defense, but they're fast, and they, they play kind of an odd, unusual defense where they're moving people around with a three-man defensive front, and they, they play their gaps really well. Pass defense is where they really made the huge step and improvement from last year to this year, and I think why West Virginia is in contention for the national championship. Mountaineers showing blitz, and here they come. They don't get there. Now they do in Boston. Will go down at the 22-yard line. They have done such a better job this year disguising where the blitzes are coming from. Last year was rather transparent, not now. I'll tell you what, I mean, you've got a freshman quarterback who's playing on the road in an offense that's trying to be very vanilla to protect him and to, to run the football and to not hurt his defense. I think every time he goes back to pass, you put pressure on him and see if he can make a play. That's right. what brightest to kick to Rivers who leads the conference in punt returns almost 11 yards per try Mountaineers got some pressure 
And a fair catch made by Rivers at the 43. 36-yard kick, no return. Still scoreless in Morgantown in the backyard brawl. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love you here. And at part by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia. The Mountaineers and the Panthers. Nothing, nothing. First quarter. You know, Pitt has accomplished part of their plan, which is to play great defense. They've got a couple good stops, but the other half of that equation is play field position. That has not been in their favor. Third West Virginia possession, or fourth now. Third started on the Pitt 27, and a pair of them start on their own 43. Don't want to give them the short field. Darrell Jala makes the catch at the 49-yard line. Mountaineers, one of the top five teams in the preseason. They got off to a really good start, won their first four games. Then they ran into six turnovers against South Florida and lost 21-13, six turnovers. They almost won the game anyway. They won their next six to get to 10-1, and one, winning the Big East title along the way, the fourth time in five years. And here they stand against the Panthers. They win tonight. They will play for a national championship. Slayton. Well, there's a good tackle right there. You, you talk about tackling, how important it is when you play this team. That was an excellent tackle by their defensive end. Joe Claremont yep, Joe stood his ground, fought off a block, did a great job. And again, these guys in space are very difficult to bring down. I mean, UConn was a good tackling team before last week when they gave the Morgan down, and they got shredded. 66 points the Mountaineers rang up. And Randy Etzel, their coach, said if they don't turn it over, nobody beats them. They win the national championship. White in trouble. Runs away from it. Pat White with that blazing speed. Everybody had an angle on him, and he still destroyed it. There's that speed that is able to run away from a problem. I mean, this is a blitz, and it should have been a sack. But he runs away from McKillop, and then he runs away from Greg Ramius. And he turns a sack or a loss of yardage into a big play just by pure speed. That's what oh. makes Pat White special right there. He makes a play where there is no play. First down from the 29. Devine, talk about speed. And the little guy taking down it to 23. Devine is averaging nine and a half yards a carry. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Pat White is all the way from Daphne, Alabama, down by Mobile. And former coach here, Rick Trickett, saw some film on him as a junior, showed it to Rich Rodriguez. They really liked him. They found out that a lot of SEC schools were recruiting him as a safety or a defensive player. And Rich Rodriguez saw that speed and saw his winning attitude how he managed a football team and said, no way, this guy's quarterback all the way. It's one of the main reasons he ended up at West Virginia. They liked him as a QB. And what a great decision that was. White on the option. Gives it to Slayton. He's down to the 20. They need to reach the 19 for a first down. You know, just to follow up on that story about Pat White, I mean, he actually had committed to LSU. Didn't sign with them, but had committed to LSU. Called Rich Rodriguez and said, you know, I think I made a mistake. And, and Rich said, well, did, you haven't signed with him yet. You haven't made any mistake yet. And they actually, he changed his commitment. And then he actually got drafted in baseball. And Rich said they had to re-recruit him again to kind of sell him on coming to West Virginia to play football. Schmidt trying to get the first down. This is going to be very close to the sticks. And he wasn't one of those guys who was a 51st round draft choice either. He was picked in the fourth round for a significant amount of money between $300,000 and $350,000. Gunn and McKillop were in on the tackle, and they'll bring the sticks in to measure. It's going to be awful close here. I think in this, when the season began, when everybody talked about West Virginia and said, okay, how can they be a legitimate contender for the national championship season or this season? I think everybody thought two things had to happen. Number one, their defense had to play better, which they have done all year. And Pat White's got to be a better thrower, a more consistent thrower. His first two years, he didn't even throw enough to, to rank in the NCAA right. statistics. Well, this year, he's completing 69% of his passes. 40, 14 touchdowns, four interceptions, and, and he's 10th 
in the NCAA in passing efficiency. And when he needs to throw it on a rope for 30 yards, he can do it. Devon. Look at this cut. And they just got him. That is a great tackle by Aaron Berry. Well, you mentioned it. Paul Rhodes, their defensive coordinator, said, we take pride in our tackling. In fact, he said that's the only statistic that he keeps on Sunday nights to give to his players after grading film is missed tackles. Well, this is an excellent open field tackle by Aaron Berry. Devine getting more and more playing time as the season goes along in the different packages. Schmidt is back in there now. Slayton is out on a wing. Second and about seven. White. Panthers with a solid game plan right now. Defensively, Shane Murray was there. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Todd, to follow up what you're talking about with Paul Rose, he said that, you know, if they kept a statistic in the country for missed tackles, they would not be in that. He said, would be in the top 10 for not missing tackles. He said what he really emphasizes with his players are the right angles, bending their knees, moving their feet, wrapping up, and don't let go. It's, it's a skill that's hard to master, guys, as we've known as so many people miss those tackles with West Virginia, but Paul Rhodes felt very confident going into this game that they had at least a shot. Well, Holly, it's almost a lost start against anybody, let alone a team with this kind of speed. They can make you look silly even when you're in the right place. Wow. With a he gun and shot. Renaud fell down trying to stop and make the catch, and Pat White got yeah. drilled. He got hit right in the chops on this play. He rolled left and got hit right as he released the football. Watch this hit on Pat White, a blitzing linebacker right under the chin. Cool. And then the receiver fell down, so he gets the incomplete pass and a little bit of a headache as well. Wow, that one's going to leave a mark. Eric Thatcher came from a safety spot. McAfee will try from 32. He missed a chip shot from 20. My gosh, he missed another one. Are you kidding? McAfee had missed only two all year long. He has had a brilliant season and a wry smile on the face of Rich Rodriguez. His team has blown two scoring chances. It's something we all miss tremendously, just to be entertained for hours on end with his stories and his sense of humor. And we try to do everything we can to help promote the V Foundation. He was one of the most entertaining people ever to be around. We hope you join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V or log on to www.jimmyv.org and donate. I lost one of the best friends I ever had, Tom Llewellyn, to cancer this summer. And the best athlete my high school ever produced, Bobby Secret, wow. had just been diagnosed with cancer. And our, our thoughts and prayers go out to him. Such a dread disease. Maybe we can all band together and help. Pitt makes a change at running back. They've got Larod Stevens howling in there. He lost the starting job to the freshman LaShawn McCoy, but he's a pretty good runner yeah. in his own right. He's, he's quick. He's not as big or as physical as the freshman McCoy, but he's a hard guy to tackle. He gets lost behind those big blockers sometimes at 5'7", 180 pounds. Also a good receiver, hard guy to cover out of the backfield as well. You got another guy who can carry the ball pretty well. That's Conridge Collins, the fullback. He's much more of a blocker now, but has accepted that role, but he had some skill carrying the football. Second and three for the Panthers. Toss sweep. Wicks. Nice, solid stop. And no gain from the senior Eric Wicks from the safety spot. Well, you mentioned the West Virginia defense had to be better yep. for them to have a shot, not only at the Big East, but a national championship. They obviously are better. The run game is is where they're the stoutest, I think, yep. although the pass defense is 15th in the country. But look at the points allowed, only 17-6. Even when they've given up a lot of yards, they've been able to keep other guys out of the end zone. Third down here. Pitt just wants to string some first downs together. Ouch. <laughs> well, 
at West Virginia, and Jeff Castillo, their coordinator, knows that Pitt's going to play conservative. Their defense is playing well. They don't want to put this quarterback in some bad situations, and so they're going to guess some on defense and gamble with some run blitzes, anticipating run. That time, Morty Ivey from his outside linebacker position was blitzing. It wasn't so much a blitz to sack the quarterback. It was to stop the run. It was a pretty good guess, yes, too. Was. Because he unloaded into the first quarter. Pitt's got to be happy about it. It's nothing, nothing. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. Glad you could join us from Morgantown, West Virginia for the 100th renewal of the Backyard Brawl. A lot at stake tonight. West Virginia, number two in the country in the BCS rankings. A chance to go to a national championship game if they win tonight. But Pitt is not co cooperating. Dave Brightus will punt. Vaughn Rivers looking for a chance to return a kick. It was his own man that ran into him. That's why there was no flag. He was tangled up with a pit coverage man, but it was actually a West Virginia man that ran in to the punt returner. Boy, that's a shock for a kick returner. Yeah. Concentrating on the ball. Yeah, right. Let's go to Holly. But guys, we just saw Pat White take that hard hit under the chin on the last series. The trainers came over, looked into his eyes, really checked him out. He said he's fine and got a little irritated that the trainers kept bothering him. But Rich Rodriguez came over and talked to him, but he didn't ask him how he was. He just said, hey, is that defensive end squeezing? <laughs> <laughs> it's the trainer's job to ask him how he is. That's right. Mm -hmm. He said his feet's not, his feet are okay, right? <laughs> First and 10 from the 45. White hit from behind. The ball is loose and the Panthers have it. Yep. Well, we talked about turnovers. Now, again, this was ruled a fumble, which means they can review it. If it would have been ruled an incomplete pass, then it would not have been a reviewable play. Was his arm coming forward when the ball came out? No, that Dude. ball came out before the arm started going forward, and I think it just slipped out of his hand. It is a cold night. And Pat White doesn't like to play in the cold weather, even though he's got short sleeves on and no long sleeves. That ball just slipped out. I don't think it was hit by anybody. Claremont with the pressure, but that ball just flipped right out of the hands of Pat White. Claremont is an outstanding pass rusher. Nine and a half sacks this year. This is the kind of thing that can torment this team. Turnovers, it's the only thing that has hurt them this year. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, this is such a simple formula. I mean, everybody, coaches will all tell you that turnover margin is the most important statistic in football. With, but with this offense, the only teams that stop the West Virginia offense are the West Virginia offense. In 21 wins over the last two years, 21 turnovers. In the three losses, 14 turnovers in those three games. I mean, when, when they struggle, it's when they struggle protecting the football. At some point, doesn't Pitt have to take another chance? Yeah. They, they can't to. just keep running the yeah. ball. And I think they have to throw on early downs in play action and not put the pressure on the quarterback in third down. There goes Bostic. Had a man and overthrew him. Had O'Derek Turner open. Let's go to Reese Davis, the Sports Center, 30 at 30. All right, Mike, news stories on the Sports Center 30 at 30. Les Miles apparently will remain head coach at LSU. Earlier reports on College Game Day this morning reported sources saying Miles is on his way to Michigan. Miles has refuted those, saying he will stay in Baton Rouge. And charges filed against all four suspects arrested in the Sean Taylor case all have been charged with unpremeditated murder for the Redskins' safety. Sports Center after the game, stay current ESPN News. Big third down here for the Panthers. They have gained only 22 yards in this game in 13 plays. Another blitz coming from the outside. Pass complete underneath. That very is going to be very, very close. It may be the length of a football short. Cedric McGee made the tackle. Now they're saying incomplete, so there's not even a choice for Dave Wanstead. I think those crutches may end up 
splintered before the <laughs> evening's over. There's Kim the ball Lund. hitting the ground. That's right. Which they might need on the way home. That was good protection by the pit offensive line that time, giving Bostic enough time to make a play. But once again, a three and out for the pit offense. So the West Virginia defense certainly doing their job. An interception, the first pit possession, and now four consecutive three and outs. So Pitt can't take advantage of a huge break. Rivers will let that go and it bounces into the end zone. And Dave Wanstead is really mad about that too because they still need to get the field position advantage. It's only one week until the hardware is handed out in New York. When we come back, we'll find out Todd's Heisman picks. Nothing, nothing. We're in the second quarter, Todd. Surprise. Well, it is, and uh, Pitt's defense is the reason that this game is so close. And after that last brightest punt, you don't think Dave wants that, wanted to flip the field finally on the field position. He's got a crutch holder now. He, he's given somebody <laughs> the crutches to hold so he doesn't break them. But he's telling Dave Brightest, hey, our defense is playing great. We had a chance to pin them down deep and help our defense, and you kicked it right into the end zone. And you're only going to hold these guys down so often. Yeah. We have seen it for years now. Here's Devine. He'll pick up about three. And this is not the typical West no. Virginia offense that we have seen. Well, look at their first four possessions. Now, you see missed field goal, missed field goal in possessions two and four. Those both should have been made. I mean, they should have at least six points in this game. But the bottom line is Pitt's defense has done their job. They've not given up any big, easy plays. And West Virginia has hurt themselves. Now, Greg Fry, their offensive line coach, very animated on the sideline before this possession on his offensive line. This will bring up a third and about three for the Mountaineers as uh, Romeus made the tackle. Backup defensive end behind Chris McKillop. The brother combination for the Panthers, very effective. Romeus is a young guy, a freshman from Coral Springs, Florida, who uh, they just feel will be an NFL player. He's just still learning how to play football in his third year of organized football. Pat White throws long. The receiver pulled up short. Incomplete. West Virginia will have to punt. Somebody misread that Lions, the big guy they were throwing for. And West Virginia out of sync right now offensively. Well, we talked about those two missed field goals. And uh, it takes the air out a little it, bit, it doesn't does. it? It does. And when you consider that... Uh, that was the only game other than the South Florida game that they did not score in the first quarter. Uh, and of course, that game was the, the only game they lost, 21 to 13. McAfee to punt to Barry. Barry from the 30 makes the two men Gunners miss. And he's back to the 39-yard line. Nine-yard return, 43-yard kick. Trip Hale made the tackle. Here's what I, you know, this is my opinion on the Heisman. I think it's down to these four guys, and I, and I, as a voter, am waiting till the end of this weekend. I mean, I think all these guys still have a shot, a legitimate shot. Of course, Tim Tebow and Darren McFadden are done. They're not playing. Chase Daniel playing tonight against Oklahoma. Pat White tonight. And, and I really can't tell you which way I'm going. I just think it's been that kind of a year. And uh, all four of those guys, you could make a compelling argument for all four of them to be the Heisman winner. Brooks is in as the blocker from McCoy. Pitt's offense hasn't gone anywhere. McCoy, some running room this time, and picks up about six yards as Bostic stumbled coming out of the center. You, you brought up the point in their last possession. They're not going to be able to just slam the ball and just run it only. Now, now they're, they're safe right now because the score is 0-0, but you know you're not going to shut out West Virginia. They've got to throw the football and get some chunks of yardage with the passing game. And I really think what Matt Cavanaugh, the offensive coordinator, will, will try to do is play action pass on rundowns to protect his quarterback. Bostic tried to go deep once and has an interception to show for it. McCoy, maybe a yard oh, shy of a first down there. Tackle by Stuart Barry. Barry made the tackle as Davis led the way from his left guard spot. 
McCoy got getting a little antsy yeah. here, you know? Yeah, McCoy got up limping a little bit at the end of that play, a third and short yardage play. See if he'll slam it up in there on this play. Well, this is an enormous offensive line to average around 315. If nothing else, they ought to be able to root out a yard. McCoy might have got it on his second effort if he did. Well, he was hit in the backfield. Yeah. Didn't look like he was going to make it, but fought forward. And I think he's got it. That yellow line is not an official mark, but it's always yeah. very, very close. Usually if the ball's on top of it, it is a first down. And if they make the first down, this might be the spot you see them try another shot with Pat Bostic. They've, they've run the ball well enough that play action should be effective. And when you play action pass, it helps your protection, and it affects linebackers and opens up seams between the secondary and the linebackers. And now would be a good time to go play action pass for Pittsburgh. That is Pitt's first first down since the initial offensive play of the game when they got 12 yards on a McCoy run. There's the play action fake you called for. Pass over the middle is behind oh, Turner. Oh, Derek Turner found a hole oh, in the zone. Again. Panthers may have oh, also gotten away with a hole on pass protection. Well, he found a hole in the secondary, but because Bostic had to move to his left, watch, he wasn't able to just set up and throw from the pocket. He had to move to his left and then tried to throw back to the right and not able to get his feet set in order to make an accurate throw. They had an opening, and they had what they wanted, just couldn't connect with it. But, but that is what they're going to need to do, throw on those early downs with play action. Morty Ivey was coming on a blitz. It looked like McCoy and Colin Teller. McCoy on second long, breaks a tackle, then is driven back. Check in with Holly. Well, guys, it's important to point out for Pitt that they're playing without two of their top tight ends tonight. Nate Byam is out. He had surgery on Monday. John Pelusi also out with a bad turf toe. And we talked with defensive coordinator for West Virginia, Jeff Castile, and he said, you know, if indeed those guys don't play, we feel like we can be a little bit more reckless and get after this quarterback because he won't have as great a protection. He won't feel as comfortable with the new people in there. And, and so far, they have been reckless to really put the pressure on that kid. Well, you're right, Holly. He's only one out of five, no yards, and an interception. And that really doesn't have to do that much with the secondary. It's that front seven that's done the job. Third and four in West Virginia territory. Here comes the blitz. They want to screen to McCoy. Nice good call. call. Very good call because West Virginia came with the blitz. They brought five, which meant man-to-man -man coverage, and they were able to slip the screen out for the first down. You don't think 60,000 people are getting a little antsy right now in the stadium? West Virginia's coming with pressure off the edge, and they're going to slip McCoy right over here and get the screen. Excellent call against this defense. Nobody is accounting for LaShawn McCoy. They get blockers out in front, and it's an easy throw for the quarterback and a new set of downs for the Panthers. And this does something else for Pittsburgh. This takes time off the clock. Anything to shorten the game is good for them. Stevens Howling is back in. He'll pick up about two before he's thrown back. Shortens the game and rests their defense, which has played very well so far in the ball game. I like this kid. I mean, I just, just yeah. watching him on film earlier in the week, watching him tonight, he is uh, he's the real deal. Six 100-yard games this year. He's the first 1,000-yard rusher for the Panthers since the year 2000 when Kevin Barlow did it. He had a little bit of a fumble problem midway through the season in, in, uh, in a few games, but uh, here in the last couple weeks, done a better job protecting the football. McCoy on the delay, trying to get outside. Picks up maybe another half yard. Antonio Lewis up from the corner. 
He's out of Harrisburg, as you said earlier, Todd, and he has really put up some numbers, and he's done it without the benefit of a threat of a passing game since they lost Bill Stahl at the beginning of the year. I mean, everybody knows LaShawn McCoy is yeah. going to carry the football, and he still put up those yep. numbers. Well, not only did they lose their quarterback, but even before the season started, they had an All-American candidate at wide receiver, Derek Kinder, who tore his knee up and missed the entire season. So a lot of pressure on that young man to carry the offensive load. Now they've got three wide receivers in there on third and seven. West Virginia comes with another blitz. Bostic somehow got away from it. Throws on the run, and it's uh. intercepted. Yes! <laughs> I know Bostic is not the most mobile guy, but this is one he needs to run. I mean, he's got a lot of green grass in front of him, and he's got to just tuck this one away and try to run for the first down. He tried to squeeze one in to tight coverage, but he's got space. He may or may not make the first down. He chooses to throw, and Rivers picks him off. That's Vaughn Rivers. Oh, what a great pick. Oh, here we go. Yeah, they, these crutches have no chance. Well, no. He, he eased up. Now, they don't have a chance, though, I don't think. It's a good thing he hands them to an assistant coach before the offending player gets back over there. Those are great weapons. So West Virginia back on offense. And Pitt is doing them too many favors right now to pull an upset. Here's Holly. Guys, it's interesting. Vaughn Rivers is a kid for West Virginia that actually grew up nearby Pittsburgh. He was very offended that he was overlooked by Pittsburgh. He said, this is sweet justice that we're playing with everything on the line against them, and they didn't want us. He has a pick, and the other guy that was overlooked, Morty Ivory, Ivy, he has a sack. So they're trying to make a statement to the people who thought they weren't good enough to play. Boy, and that's the, the kind of thing the players just look forward to so much. Pat White under pressure, throws behind his receiver. It's caught. That's another one of those fade patterns. You throw it short on purpose, and Raynaud made the catch, and they're saying, now, no. I think they're ruling this off and calling it a, an incompletion. Raynaud says, I caught it. Yeah. Throw the challenge flag. I caught the ball. It looked like he did. It was underthrown, very difficult to defend. He comes back for it. Boy, I think, I think Raynaud might be right. It never touched ball. the ground. Yeah. That was a great catch by Darius Renat. This guy is a talented wide receiver. And Pat White threw that ball under duress. Uh, Pitt has been able to get some pressure. And that time it was Mick Williams who was able to get in there and force the quick throw. That's why that ball was underthrown, because of the pressure from Mick Williams. This defensive line for Pittsburgh has played pretty well tonight. That's a catch. And a heck of a catch. And pretty good coverage by Aaron Barry. I mean, he was running the pattern as well as Raynaud was. The rule in college, if the ball hits the ground, it's an incomplete pass. Even if the receiver has control of it. And that's the difference between college and the NFL rule. That ball did not touch the ground. No, not at all. No, that was a great catch by Renaud. He doesn't need to plead his case to us. That, that was a great catch. Take a look at this throw again by Pat White. Pressure up inside from the nose guard, Ernest Williams. But that's a good catch by Renan. After review, the ruling is reversed. It is a catch. The ball will be placed on the 41-yard line. First down. Don't you just love college, I do. the college replay system? Yep. I mean, this stuff can't happen in pro football. They have so many limited opportunities, and that's it. Yep. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, Darius Renaud on a previous series had been slipping on the field, so very wisely the equipment guys get out, got him a new pair of shoes, and seemed to pay off, guys. He was in the right spot, and he had good feet on him. And good hands. You're right, Ollie, and he may have caught a pass very early in the ball game had his feet not come out from under him. Divine caught from behind, picks up maybe a yard. 
You know, why do I think this this using Divine and Slayton in the backfield together is going to even make this offense more explosive? I mean, you don't want to eliminate Owen Schmidt, obviously. I mean, he right. is a valuable weapon and a part of this offense. But when you have those two speed guys in the backfield and you have Pat White at quarterback, you can go speed either way. That option threat is just the same going left or right with those two guys. Schmidt back in the game now. They go to Slayton. Made a move to get free, and then Slayton shows you a little power. He was trapped. That play was going yep. absolutely nowhere, and he may have gotten a first down on it. Yeah. And you see the start and stop speed oh. of Steve Slayton. I mean, they've got fast guys. I think this guy may be the fastest of all of them. Stop, start again, and he started faster than all those guys in white shirts. That's all he that did. got down to. Well, I really enjoyed We We got to have lunch with several of the players on Friday for West Virginia, and uh, just a delightful group of guys. And Steve Slayton is, is a humble, humble guy. His numbers are down this year, but uh, I'll tell you what, he's a great leader of this football team, doing whatever it takes for them to win games. It is a first down for West Virginia. Slayton is going to put the paperwork in for his spot in the NFL draft. He says he wants to take a look and see where he'll be, but you sort of get the sneaky suspicion that he'll be back. Yeah. Well, I think both he and Pat White will both be back. Of course, Devine is a freshman. They'll have all that speed. Schmidt will graduate. Schmidt will graduate. Renaud will graduate. But they've got a couple young freshman receivers that they're working into the mix. Jock Sanders is one of those guys. Brandon Hogan, another freshman receiver that's getting more playing time. White designated quarterback run and gets maybe a yard out of it, and that's it. Well, I'll tell you what, Pat White is down at the uh -oh. end of that play. The only game they lost this year, Pat White, and he's, he's showing his, his thumb. thumb. Yep, his right thumb. Now, if there is any good news, it's that Pat White throws left-handed, but it's his right thumb. There's his backup. Jared Brown better warm up, better take some snaps. He at least has to come in for a play. Got the ball in his left hand, and it looks like when he hit the ground, maybe his thumb just got bent back underneath him. And the way he was holding it, the way the trainer was reaching for it, it looked like it might have been a dislocation. Yeah, that's right. And that's nasty stuff. We'll check on Pat White when we come back. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Sales, the perfect gift at Sales, the Diamond Store, and Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia. Pat White is out of the ballgame as they attended the thumb and sophomore Jared Brown, 6'4", 220, out of West Palm Beach, Florida, is in at quarterback. That was a strange play for Pat White. I mean, he was hurt before he fell to the ground on that play. Brown, who played extensively in the South Florida loss, takes off. Brown, first down, out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Obviously, this is a kid that can run as well. And he's a big, strong guy at 6'4", 220. But let's go back and look at the play with Pat White. He puts his right hand on his center's back, Mike Dent. Right in there, somehow his thumb got tied up. And he was hurt before he fell to the ground. Holly, what do you have? Well, guys, right now they're examining that right thumb. It's right where the thumb meets the hand, kind of that joint right there. Pat is a pretty tough guy. I rarely see him in this kind of pain, guys. He's been very demonstrative. Right now, they're still look, working that out. But just one point to note is Rich Rodriguez mentioned to us earlier in the season he felt bad for Oregon when Dennis Dixon got hurt because their backup was not a similar type of quarterback and it right. limited their package. Well, he said, I feel so great that we have Jarrett Brown because we don't have to change much of our package. So just something to note that Rodriguez feels very comfortable with this backup. Right. You don't have to change the package with Jarrett Brown. The biggest difference, though, is just is just experience and the decision making aspect where you've got a guy who's been a starter for three years in Pat White who who knows what it what they want to do is interesting when you talked about 
uh, the, the play calling. And Rich Rodriguez, one of the few head coaches that still calls his own plays. He showed us his play sheet. And on the one side, it's all the different plays. On the other side, he says, this is our answer sheet. This is whatever we get a look, these are the answers that we have. He says, what you want is when your quarterback knows your answer sheet as good as the coaches. Well, Pat White does know that. Jarrett Brown probably doesn't know that answer sheet quite as well. And Jared Brown, as good as he might be, cannot match the speed of Pat White. Slayton. Pitt's done a great job following up Slayton. He has been the first option for defenses to close down this year. Then it's been up to White. That's one of the reasons he's had a great year. Six carries, only six yards for Slayton. Of course, the good news for West Virginia, if there is any right now, is his is Pat White's non-throwing hand. Right. I think Darius Renaud's got to become a bigger factor for West Virginia right now. And bubble screens are getting him the football as well as Slate. Brown throws. That's Gonzalez at the 26-yard line. There have been so many surprises in this backyard <laughs> brawl. This is the 100th. This would be the biggest surprise of all of them if the Panthers knock off number two West Virginia this time and deny them a shot at a national championship game. And for Pitt and a four and seven year, how sweet would that be? Third and five. Pitt comes with a blitz. Brown on a rush, throws Raynaud. Horse collared out of bounds at the 10. Kid's got a nice pair of hands, doesn't he? And that's a good throw, too. Yep. It's a good throw, and it's a good job by Owen Schmidt picking up the blitz. Watch the blitz come right here, and Owen Schmidt's going to take the guy's legs out. And when he does that, that opens up the throwing lane for Jared Brown to find Raynaud and make the accurate throw. And at the end of the play, using the face mask to... Uh, to bring down the ball carrier. And they missed it. It will be first down West Virginia just outside the 10. And they'll lose five. Slayton never had a chance as McKillop came up from the corner. That's Chris, the defensive end, and Pat White now not getting uh, the constant care of the trainer. Spot the ball back at the 14. Second down for Brown. Blitz coming. Quarterback keeper. Panthers cover up well. Let's go to Holly. Guys, the athletic trainer Dave Kern just told me that if Pat White can move his thumb, if he can push with it and grab a ball, they'll let him play. But right now, he can do none of those things. They just went through extensive training, seeing if he could put some pressure on the athletic uh, trainer's hand, see if he could pull his fingers away. He couldn't do any of those things, guys. He's in a lot of pain. I just saw him grab the team chaplain, and they said a little prayer. And right now, they're taping him up heavily with ice. So at this point, not looking positive for Pat White. Third down for West Virginia. And Mountaineer fans can only hope, hope that White is not seriously injured. I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with this pit defense. I was impressed with him on Friday. Uh-oh, extracurriculars after the play. I just, I'm just singing the praises of the defense, and they may have gotten a little carried away at the end of this play. They had him stopped on third down, and they Dead may ball. have just given West Virginia a gift. Unnecessary roughness. Yep. Number 51 on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. What Tommy Duart, the junior college transfer, and Dave Wanstatt beside himself. What a costly penalty because they had him stop. They were going to force another field goal attempt, and then after the play, Duart, well, that's a flop job by yeah, Stanchek. Sure I mean, that, that, that's a total flop by Ryan Stanchek, but it did happen right in front of the official. It's, it's a, a bad mistake by Duart and a tremendous Hurt acting job 
by Ryan Stanchuk. That's Greg Gattuso, the defensive line coach who I played with in Penn State talking to him. Poor decision by no. Duhart, but Stanchuk's a little stronger than that. Yeah, just a little. What a mistake. Touchdown, West Virginia. Instead of forcing a field goal, and they've already missed two, right. it's a touchdown. And you made the point earlier, you can't give a team like this too many chances. And uh, Pitt has played well, but they kept giving West Virginia chances. And that time, the offense led by Jared Brown, not Pat White, capitalized for a touchdown. McAfee on for the point after. And with only 1.43 to go in the half, West Virginia gets a touchdown and gets on the board. And the injured All-American and Heisman candidate, Pat White, was the biggest cheerleader for his backup, Jared Brown. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia. Here is tonight's Atlanta. trivia question. What school has the most all-time wins without winning a national championship? We'll give you the answer a little later on. West Virginia gets on the board. A drive kept alive by a personal foul penalty against the Panthers. Lowell Robinson is deep to receive West Virginia's kickoff. He's back there with Doran Dickerson. High short kick. Dickerson trying to get to the near side, looking for a block. Tripped up as he got across the 25. Let's we'll check in with Reese. All right, guys, coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, the Wolverines' target is miles away from Michigan. Apparently, we'll give you the latest on the Les Miles drama. The Tiger tail as Missouri tries to work their way into the national championship game, and we'll also tell you for whom it is coming up roses. It's a familiar face. Mark and Lou join me. We'll see you in just a bit. Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. All right, Reese, thanks very much. Do you think there's any interest tonight in, say, Columbus, Ohio, or Just a Baton bit. Rouge? Yeah, a little bit. Georgia. Bostic at quarterback. They give to McCoy. McCoy takes it up to the 35-yard line. Pitt back to what they came in trying to do, establish a ground game, shorten the game. Clock running. Panthers showing no sense of urgency. Yeah. I don't think they want to put that on their freshman quarterback on the road. Their defense has played well. He's already thrown one interception tonight. Don't do something to hurt your opportunity in the second half of the ball game. Well, if you'd ask Dave Wanstead, would you accept a halftime oh, yeah. score where you're down by seven? You'd have to yeah. think he'd be thrilled. Well, yeah, that's where absolutely. he is right now. Why throw it away? Absolutely. Now they will give the Panthers a first down. West Virginia has all of its timeouts remaining, by the way. Back to the touchdown. Well, I want you to watch this block by the center right here, Mike Dent. This is an excellent block because that defensive nose guard is on his outside eye, and he is still able to turn him and seal him to the inside and open up the space for Jared Brown. That is not an easy block for a center. Mike Dent did it beautifully that time. McCoy. Out to the 46, and there's the timeout. The answer to tonight's Aflac. trivia question, what school has the most all-time wins without winning a national championship? Well, usually it's one of the two teams we have playing. Pitt's already won one, so the answer would be, da, da West yeah. Virginia. 663 victories, no national championships. That's kind of a surprising it answer. Is. I, it I is. didn't realize that but the Mountaineers with Pat White at quarterback would probably be favored to win over most teams in a national championship matchup. 
Sam Huff and Bruce Bosley when they played back in the golden era of West Virginia football some 50 years ago it is now did not deliver a national title. Well they played for one in 1988. Yep. Could have Notre Dame. Yep. And their quarterback got hurt in that game. Major Harris was injured early in that game right. He hurt his hurt his hand and it cut their offense in half. Couldn't run the option to the left side. Panthers now on second and a long two line up to throw. They throw underneath and Turner makes the catch. Well, late flag coming in. It's going to stop the clock and help Pitt. Pitt was going to spike the ball I think to stop the clock and uh, the penalty is stopping it for him. Dead ball. Personal foul. 47 on the defense. Late hit. 15 yard penalty. First down. Now West Virginia gets to do something stupid. Yeah. Well, Reed Williams, who's one of their leaders, their leading tackler, number 47, at the end of the play. Here he is right here. He's going to come in at the end of the play. What? And do absolutely nothing. What in the world is that call? Well, that's wow pitiful well now if you're Dave <laughs> wants that now you were trying to protect the ball now you're in scoring territory with 17 seconds and one timeout take another shot and see if you can set up Connor Lee your field goal kicker who's 16 of 19 on the year and this pass thrown well out of bounds I have never seen a personal foul where nobody got touched. Yeah, well, he did touch him, but I mean, that was not a, a late hit. That Now here, here they've got to kick the field goal because that penalty started. Boy, that, that's, that was just a reflex of feeling a guy coming over his shoulder. And uh, that's certainly. the silliest call I yeah, ever saw. It didn't look like a penalty, but. Well, they'll try a 48 yard field goal. Speaking of guys who've had great years, yeah. Connor Lee has been terrific. This would be a career-long effort to get Pitt on the board and cut the lead to four. And Lee drills it. Panthers will grab a little momentum going to the locker Absolutely. room. Absolutely. And Connor Lee comes through on a 48-yard field goal to make it 7-3. to Here's Holly. Coach, first of all, what's going on with your place kicker? He's usually so steady, two yeah, misses. He just, uh, I don't know if he's pressing a little bit or what, but he's hes normally very reliable, and I'm sure he'll respond in the second half. What's the status for Pat White's right hand? Well, his thumb came back off, and it's on his non-throwing hand. They put it back in. Once he gets the feeling back in, he should be okay. All right, thanks, Coach. And everybody in West Virginia holding their breath, hoping Rich Rodriguez knows exactly what he's saying about that thumb. It's 7-3 to three at the half. Reese Davis with the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. All right, gentlemen, 7-3. We'll see if that feeling comes back in time for Patrick White to play in the second half. And with a little bit of an assist on both sides from the Zebras, each team gets on the board. Vlade Divac taking a flop and allowing West Virginia <laughs> another play. And then a phantom personal foul. 7-3, West Virginia trying to get into the title game. The officials perhaps getting caught up in the emotion of this game as well, Mark. Well, it's a very emotional game. It's the backyard brawl, Reese. I told you it's very emotional, but West Virginia in this game has missed scoring opportunities. They've moved the ball between the two. 20s had two opportunities to score easy field goals and get on the board and they didn't but they did score that touchdown now West Virginia has run wild on Pittsburgh the last couple of years they have not done that tonight what's been the difference well I think West Virginia is not able to control the line of scrimmage with their offensive lines they have previously the pit defensive line their linebackers particularly have played very well up front they've controlled the line of scrimmage consequently the backs can't run downhill they have to bounce east west and then they haven't been able to make yardage i just think west virginia is a little tight in this game at this point because the pressure being number two the opportunity of going to play for a national championship and they may have overlooked pittsburgh a little bit looking at their record and coming into this game with the momentum that they had and the other thing it remains to be seen whether they get tighter if they don't get their leader back in the second half and patrick white although jared brown played oh, very well last i year. like him against <laughs> played very well against rutgers last year when pressed into service you know west virginia has to win to go to the national championship game
haven't started the celebration quite yet. They are number two in the BCS this week. They would get a shot at a national championship, they being West Virginia, but they have to get rid of Pitt. It hasn't been that easy, even though the Panthers only have 75 yards in total offense in the first half. West Virginia nearly double that, but they're only up by four points, and they lost their Heisman candidate quarterback, Pat White, at least temporarily. Well, it doesn't look like he's going to play anymore. He's got a sweatshirt on and no pads and no helmet. So this game uh, and the fate of West Virginia is going to be in the hands of Jarrett Brown, his backup. Vaughn Rivers. That's a from behind, ball comes loose. Did Pitt get it? Yep, yes, they, they did. did. Holy cow. Well, we said, what does Pitt have to do to have a chance to win this game? They had to run the football. They had to play great defense and tackle, and they've got to get some turnovers. They've done all three of those tonight. Rivers, no idea of what was behind him. And coming in at the end of the play was Lowell Robinson, number 23, and stripped that ball out for Pittsburgh. The Panthers have had some breaks tonight. They have not converted. Boy, you just get the feeling like they need to convert. I mean, if they're going to really have a legitimate chance of pulling the upset, they've got to take advantage of something. Wouldn't you throw here? Wouldn't you think? I think so. You had 18 yards passing in the first half. Yes, Pat Bostick threw two interceptions, but the, you're not going to beat West Virginia by just playing close to the best the whole second half. And the Mountaineers have to be a little stunned right now. Instead, they give it to McCoy, and McCoy is drilled by Morty Ivy. This is the kind of thing that has happened all year long, especially to the number two ranked team in the country. Yeah. If you're number two, you got a target on your back. People have gone down. There are other teams waiting in the yeah. wings. Number one, Missouri is losing. Number two, yeah. West Virginia is hanging on. What a year. What a night. It's been a crazy season. It's been an interesting night so far in Pittsburgh. To their credit, they've done what they've had to do. They've slowed the West Virginia running game down, but offensively, they've got to help their defense. They've got to make some plays and get some points on the board. Out of the eye, Bostick straight back, draw to McCoy. It'll be about third and three. Let's go to Holland. Well, guys, I caught up with Dave Wanstead at halftime. I said, what did you like about the first half? He said, I love our will to win. We knew we were in for a dog fight. He said, I've been very impressed with how hard our defense has played. He said, in the second half, we have to find a way to get a big play here and let our defense hold on. Guys, more importantly, though, for West Virginia, Pat White is out for the rest of this game. I just saw his backup, Jarrett Brown, come along, yell at the offense, get them ready to go. He's all psyched up here on the sideline now if he can just get a chance. All right, thanks, Holly. Big third down here. A little bit closer. They're in field goal territory. Bostic shorts it. Can't find anybody. Now throws underneath. And that's going to be short of yeah. the first down. It looked like Porter, if he makes the catch and turns to his left, he's got the first down. But he came back and lost at least a yard. And Reed Williams, the middle linebacker, yep. made the tackle when he did. I think you're right. He tried to make a bigger play instead of just getting the first down. And when you're an offense struggling the way Pitt's offense is struggling, if he catches it and just, even if he falls down forward, he gets the first down. But he tried to turn it into a bigger play and, in essence, lost a couple yards. Well, this will bring up an interesting decision. If it's not a first down, I'll bet it's just inches short. I think you got to go for it. I mean, I think that, you know, you've got McCoy. You also, your quarterback is 6'3", 230 pounds. And Dave wants that, says, wow. let's go. No. He's going to punt the ball. I was well, just going to say, how many chances do you get? How many times are you going to be in West Virginia territory yeah. after you have the momentum with the turnover? But what Dave wants that is saying is he's saying this to his team. Our defense is playing great and West Virginia's got their backup quarterback in right now and we're only down by four points. Good let's point not as well. hurt ourselves. Let's, let's let our defense try to win this game and, and take a chance somewhere else with our offense. Good point as well. Now Rivers, who would just love to make up for that mistake, waits back at his 10. 
Up. Fake punt. I love it. I love the call. And it worked. I, I thought that they were going to go for it, but that was a that was an excellent call by Dave Wanstead. Shane Murray, a linebacker, gets the snap. Boy, and they plowed just straight ahead. Shane Murray was a high school quarterback from Pittsburgh Central Catholic, came up there under center, and did the quarterback sneak from the punt formation for the first down. Great call. Really was. Now McCoy is back in a tailback. Momentum favoring the Panthers. First and 10 at the 36. Bostic throws it out in the flat. No signal yet no now, signal. they say, incomplete. That was very, very yes. close to a lateral. And Porter couldn't come up with it. Very close. Just trying to get something going in the passing game. That was a pretty good throw by Bostic, actually. T.J. Porter just not concentrating on the catch. Dave Wants has gotten rid of the jacket and the crutches. <laughs> he's, he's pretty steamed. He doesn't need the coat anymore. McCoy hit in the backfield and then cleaned up by the West Virginia defense. Johnny Dingle came diving through, got a piece of McCoy's leg, and he, as he lost his balance, the gold-clad Mountaineers collapsed on him. Another big third down in this ballgame. And you got to feel that third down and nine favors the West Virginia defense. Only 18 yards passing for Pitt in the first half. They're not really in field goal range, so you got to figure they're throwing the football here. Will West Virginia bring pressure on this third and long? Bostic out of the shotgun. Four-man rush. Throws to the sideline, and it's caught for a first down at the 17 by O'Derek Turner. Bobbling the ball as he went to the ground. Five out of 12, only 38 yards for Bostic. But he does a nice job of staying in the pocket. He stepped up a little bit in the pocket and threw it outside for Turner away from the defender. A nice throw by Bostic and a nice job stepping up in the pocket to buy a little extra time. Oh, and Turner barely able to hang on to that. The Panthers have reached the 17. Fullback straight up the middle for about five, and that's Conridge Collins. Johnny Dingle made the tackle, and this crowd has gone completely silent. Could a chance at a national championship be slipping away from the Mountaineers at home? Their Heisman candidate quarterback is on the sideline. They have made too many mistakes so far tonight. They've left hit in this game. McCoy. First down inside the five to the four. Nice hard run. That was a big time run. Running behind the fullback, Conridge Collins, number 30, but he runs right through the tackle of Mark Magro, number 53. Watch Magro wrap him up, and he just gets drugged for about five extra yards by the hard running LaShawn McCoy. Well, we saw another freshman, Sean Moreno from Georgia, a good-looking, young, powerful runner. This guy's impressive, too. First and goal. McCoy spins at the goal line. No signal from the officials. He's just short. Just yep. short. Just short of the goal line. And remember, this drive started with the turnover on the kickoff return. And turnovers have been the undoing for West Virginia this season. Six of them in the loss to South Florida. Six of them in their two close wins over Louisville and Cincinnati. Turnovers hurting them tonight against the Panthers as well. Second and goal. Quarterback keeper, Bostic. Touchdown! <laughs> Lost his helmet, but got the ball across the plane. He doesn't care. No. 
They'll get him another helmet. Boy, made a big well when he hit Turner on the third and nine to keep this drive going. An impressive drive for Pitt. And remember, the fumble and the call by Dave Wanstead on the fake punt on fourth and one to Tremendous. keep the drive going. And they pay it off with a touchdown. The roar you might hear in the background comes from Columbus, Ohio, Athens, Georgia, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and a couple of other places. Pitt has taken the lead in a bitter revival of the backyard brawl. New Orleans on the horizon, but is it slipping away? ESPN's College Football Primetime is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. Let's take a look at the ESPNU All-State Standings Review. And this is a perfect finish to what has been an unbelievable year. Missouri is losing. West Virginia is losing. Ohio State, Georgia, Kansas, Virginia Tech, LSU, they're all at home going, you know what? We've got another shot. Who knows? Question for West Virginia. When do you start to panic? When do you say, look, we can still win this thing, backup quarterback or not? He's pretty good. Let's go win it. Uh, I don't think there's any time to panic right now. There's a lot of football left, and Jarrett Brown is a confident and talented young man to run your offense. Vaughn Rivers across the 30 to the 36. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Well, Mike, number two is not the only one that's in trouble. Number one's in a world of hurt, too. Oklahoma and Missouri Big 12 Championship game. Chris Brown in for the second time. As you see in our Taco Bell studio update. Brown, two touchdowns in this one. Three in the first meeting between the two. That's five touchdowns in six quarters against Mizzou. All right, Reese, thanks very much. In case you joined us late, Pat White, the Heisman candidate, is out. A dislocated thumb on his non-throwing hand. He will not return. And the Mountaineers have made a slew of mistakes against their arch rival. Devine, that is a planned cutback play. What a tackle. Boy, it was. Tremendous effort by the safety. Mike Phillips yep. came up, grabbed a hold of Devine's ankle, and just would not let go. Well, you're right about a design play. Try to get that defense flowing one way and then change directions and try to get that guy out on the corner. No divine. But the safety, Mike Phillips, kept his outside contained and then got a hold of the ankle and would not let go. I mean, this isn't form tackling, but it's effective tackling. Fifth time this year, or tonight, that the Panthers have made a tackle for loss. Flanker screen. Jala. Nothing. And the fans are getting really nervous and upset. Claremont and Brady in on the tackle. Well, after the big loss on first down, I mean, you don't want to do anything foolish right now. Again, I mean, West Virginia is not in a bad situation at all in this football game. Now, the good news with Jared Brown is that even though they lost the South Florida game when he played, it wasn't mop-up duty. It was when the game was on the line. That should help him in the rest of this football game. Third and long, Brown. That's an incomplete pass. The arm was coming forward. Brown. The official finally, the umpire finally signaled incomplete. He stood there and looked at it for a long time. That's the second time tonight a West Virginia quarterback just had a ball come out of his hand. It looks like a late flag over on the pit sidelines at the very end of this play. Jared Brown looked like he uh, changed his mind midway Shout through that throw. On Pittsburgh. All right. So the Mountaineers will have to punt it away. And Pat White is going to give a pep talk to the rest of the offense. Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, that's where the sideline warning came because he's not the head coach, the defensive coordinator. He Flip thinks it should have been a fumble. That, that's why he was out there. That, that He thought that should have been a fumble, not an incomplete pass. McAfee to kick it away. Barry makes the catch. 
They're up to the 36-yard line. 37-yard punt, no return. The Pitt Panthers lead number two, West Virginia. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Boston Market. Time for something good. And Guinness Draft. Please drink responsibly. Getting close to Christmas here in Morgantown, West Virginia. But in tonight's edition, the Grinch is being played by the Pittsburgh Panthers. Pat White holding on to a football, and that was that was one of the keys to a potential return. The longer this game goes with West Virginia behind, the closer he might be. McCoy trying to get outside, avoided about five tackles, and picked up four yards. Let's check in with Holly. Guys, down here on the sideline, Pat White is still in uniform, the quarterback for West Virginia. They just did another test with the athletic trainer Dave Kern to see if he was getting some strength back in that dislocated thumb. It appeared he is. They just said, go get a ball, see if he can hold a ball. They're keeping a jacket on him, keeping him warm. He has a ball in his hands right now, guys, so doesn't appear to be completely out of right now guys but uh, I'll keep you posted with what I see thank you Holly never seen 60,000 people hold their breath all at the same time McCoy picking his way for a couple this will be another big third down as Pitt tries to work on the clock tries to Get some yardage racked up. Keep their defense off the field. Maybe get close enough for another field goal. And the one thing that you can't afford to do if you're Pittsburgh, I don't think, is turn the ball over again. You had two turnovers in the first half, a pair of interceptions by Pat Bostic. You're dead even on turnovers right now in the game. Your defense is playing as well as they are. Don't give West Virginia an opportunity by being careless with the football. How about a screen that worked beautifully earlier? Little shovel pass to McCoy. He's hit and dropped, but should have the first down. And it wasn't McCoy. Excuse me. It was uh, Stevens Howland. Safe play. Little shuttle pass. If it's dropped, it's an incomplete pass, not a fumble. Get the end coming up the field, which they did. And then a nice bit of short yardage running by Stevens Howling at the end. They had not shown that play before. Nope. Nice time to call it. Panthers at their own 47-yard line. Those guard made contact. Keelan Dykes, number 96, lined up right over the center, trying to anticipate a little bit. And that'll be five. And it'll be first and five for the Panthers. Prior this now, offside, number 96 defense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Right now, none of the signs are good for West Virginia. No. Too many mistakes. Well, and it's it's interesting, too, because there, there was the sense all week from Rich Rodriguez and, and even when we saw the players and talked to them that they were very focused. They had a good week of practice. They weren't getting carried away with looking ahead or celebrating prematurely or anything. But it hasn't shown tonight in the ballgame. McCoy, first down and more. McCoy inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. And once again, it was C.J. Davis throwing the big block that sprung him into the secondary. C.J. Davis is the left guard, number 55. He gets out in front and gets a nice block on the linebacker, Magro. And then LaShawn McCoy just shows good feel and patience running in behind his blockers, and he is a powerful north and south runner. 22 carries, 99 yards for McCoy. When we met with Jeff Castile, the defensive coordinator of West Virginia. He told us, he said, hey, this guy concerns me. He is really a good player. We must do a good job on him. Stevens howling. And they have found something in the middle of that West Virginia defense. Reese Davis, how about Missouri, Oklahoma? Oh, West Virginia is looking for something positive. Missouri found it right before the half. Down 14-6 to Oklahoma. Chase Daniel keeping going in and scoring to get it to 14-12. And Gary Pinkle reaches into the bag of tricks for the two-point conversion. Jeremy Macklin gets it and throws it to Martin Rucker, who is by himself. And we are tied in the Big 12 championship game at the break. 
All right, Reese, the Pitt players all week thought what a sweet way to end the season by knocking West Virginia out of a national championship. Stevens howling, nothing, got drilled at the line of scrimmage. And that's what this kind of rivalry game means. Megro made the tackle, big third down coming. And at some point, if you're West Virginia, you're favored by four touchdowns. You got a chance to play for a national title. You say to yourself, enough's enough. Yeah. Well, Niall might be a good time to, to say that. Yeah, you would think. A third down deep in your own territory. Make a play. Fullback. About a half yard shy. Boy, decision time for the Panthers coaching staff. Field goal would give you a six point lead. But is the six point lead good enough? They've done well in short yardage to them. Well, the last time they were in a fourth and one, they showed punt and went with a fake punt and made it. That's the kicker, Connor Lee, cheering on the decision to go for it on fourth and one. Your quarterback is 6'3, 220. Do you just sneak? They'll give it to Collins, the fullback, and he dives and has the first down. Condridge Collins, and West Virginia did a good job of stacking up yeah. the bottom of that pile, so Condridge went airborne. Yeah, that was a nice decision by Collins and a nice bit of athleticism. Normally, you see a fullback just kind of lower his head and try to barrel in there. That time, he just went airborne and easily got the first down. 12 times this year, a top five team has lost to an unranked team. Pitt at four and seven is unranked. First and 10 at the 18. McCoy, gain of three. The ball carried. Clock ticking down, 251 and counting in the third quarter. Well, this game has a, we, we talked about this year, what a crazy year it's been, but this game has a, a similar feel to last year when UCLA beat USC at the end of the year in a game where USC was favored to win big and go to play for the national championship, and it was a low-scoring defensive struggle. Same kind of game right now. Pitt playing exactly the kind of game that they wanted to play tonight. McCoy shoved back, gain of a couple. Megro again with another tackle, and here we are going under two minutes in the first in the third quarter. And in this quarter now, Pitt that's their 21st offensive play. West Virginia's only run Jeez. three plays. I don't care if it's Pat White or Jared Brown or Joe Namath playing quarterback. If you only get three plays in a quarter. It's going to be tough to do much. Another huge third down. Third and five. They've had one screen and one shovel pass that have worked very well. Nothing downfield has worked. McCoy. Wow. What a move. Are you kidding? Touchdown. What a play. Late flag. A very late flag. Antonio Lewis whiffed. This may be coming back. Oh, and if it comes back, what a shame because that was a beautiful piece of running by LaShawn McCoy. He didn't need any help to get into the end zone at that point. No, he was already gone. Holding. 88 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Oderic, Oderic Turner, the wide receiver, and Dave Wanstat is livid right now. Oh, boy. That would have put him up by nine. Watch O'Derek Turner, number 88. There's where they call the penalty right there. He gets that left hand on the outside of the oh, jersey, but that's geez. a questionable call again. There have been a couple of yes, horrible calls in this game. That was a beautiful piece of running by McCoy, avoiding Antonio Lewis in the open field, and a very questionable holding call on O'Derek Turner. An enormous break for West Virginia. Pitt pushed all the way back to the 18. Now they throw the screen and he gets nothing. 
Daryl Strong, the tight end, made that catch, but West Virginia was ready for it. Now they've got to bring out the field goal unit. What a horrible break for yeah. Pitt. They're yeah. up two scores without that call. Yeah. That may have been, uh, that, that may be the biggest call, the biggest play in the game. I, I mean, so. I know we've got a whole quarter to play, but with Pat White questionable and your backup quarterback in and Pitt's defense playing as well as they're playing, the difference between a six-point game and a ten-point game, I think, is huge. Connor Lee from 35. He missed it. Holy cow. Two of the most reliable field goal kickers in this country have missed three tonight. What an unbelievable turn of events in an unbelievable game. Join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Please call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V or log on to www.jimmyv.org and donate. Thank you. Pat White still on the sideline. West Virginia will have to win it with Jared Brown, the sophomore backup quarterback. He played extensively in their only loss of the year. Brown takes off. He Look dropped the ball. Back. Three fumbled the football. Oh, he got and they back. got it back. Holy <laughs> cow. <laughs> Jameel Brady hit him. The ball came loose. Turnovers have killed this team. Ball recovered by Owen Schmidt. Carrying it kind of loosely, yeah. and you're right. Brady knocks it out, and then he is able to just kind of reach a big paw out there and, and bring it back in. And then Owen Schmidt comes over the top of it to help. You can see the difference in the running style between uh, Brown and Pat White. Look at Pitt. Look at Pitt sprinting to the other end of the field with their defensive coordinator, Paul Rhodes. When that clock went down, they sprinted to the other end of the field. You don't think this team is sensing an upset? Well, hats off to them. They have done the job tonight. They lead by three with only a quarter to go. Here we go. Next on SportsCenter, more than payback in mind, Missouri eyeing its title shot. Plus, an unknown chasing Barry Sanders' all-time best in the very latest on Les Miles' next move after the game. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. We're at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia, where an enormous upset may be in the works. Panthers, 99 yards in total offense. West Virginia, believe it or not, minus five. But that other number, four, that's all the number of plays they have. Four plays in the third quarter for one of the best offenses in college football. I think the burden is on the West Virginia offensive line here in the fourth quarter. Brown hesitated. They got him from behind. McKillop again with another stop. Let's go to Holland. Guys, the two sidelines are very different right now. Actually, in the tunnel at halftime, the pit defense came out. They were hyping, hollering, screaming. They have nothing to lose, and that's carried over in the third quarter. But here on the West Virginia sideline, guys, it's quiet. There are very few people up doing a rah-rah. Owen Schmidt just tried to yell at the guys in the huddle, but it's flat. Not much sense of urgency right now for West Virginia. Well, they better find one, Holly. They are being outplayed by the Panthers who right now want it more than they do. Blitz coming on Brown. They pick it up, and Brown down the middle. Renaud had two steps on his defender, and the ball was overthrown. Now, Pitt just dared Jared Brown to throw the football that time. That was zero coverage, which means straight man-to-man -man against all receivers with no safety help. One-on-one, -on -one and just daring Jared Brown to make a throw. He had his receiver open, Renaud, but just overthrew him. Mountaineers will have to kick it away. Barry will go deep. He's back around the 35-yard line for McAfee. Rugby kick. 
drills it, and Barry will pick it up on the hop. Looking for a block, and now flags are down everywhere. He had signaled yep. for a fair catch and then took off. Delay game. Number 17 on the receiving team. He ran after he gave a fair catch signal. Five-yard penalty. First down. Of course, the Big East had a, a situation with a play like that earlier in the year with the Connecticut return after a fair catch signal that uh, ended up deciding uh, a ball game. That time, uh, they were on top of it. Now Pitt goes back to work offensively. Have they worn down the West Virginia defense enough to do it again? Generate a long drive and take time off the clock. McCoy hitting the backfield. Johnny Dingle grabbed him and spun him down. Huge play by the West Virginia defense because they've had very few negative plays tonight. And that negative play on first down is you see the quickness of Dingle across the line of scrimmage and then the sure tackle. That puts Pitt in a very difficult situation with the quarterback, Boston. Second down and 15, deep in your own territory. That was a huge first down play for the Mountaineer defense. McCoy trying to get outside turns the corner knocked out of bounds McCoy on the carry. up at the 34 they need to reach the 39 for a first down Eric Wicks got him you know LaShawn McCoy uh, has got a little bit of everything he's got strength and power and he's got speed look at that 1295 yards a new record in the Big East Earlier this year, he became only the third true freshman to ever run for over 1,000 yards in the Big East, joining Steve Slayton and Ray Rice, who both did it as freshmen in 2005. Now he's the record holder. He is a legit talent. Yes, he is. Stevens Howling is in, in his place on third. They call it five. Delay a game. Didn't get the play call. When for the way they run their offense, that's a huge Play game. call. 19 offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. And I go back to also the negative play on first down was so huge, and now they back them up even more on third down. West Virginia, a chance to get a, a three and out and get the ball back to Jared Brown in the offense in good field position. Pitt has come up with big plays yeah. somehow in various situations tonight. This would be another one. West Virginia fans starting to get scared to death. I'd say be alert for a screen here if I'm West Virginia. It worked in the first half. Bostic straight down the middle. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> Looked like it was going to be intercepted by Johnny Holmes and Strong made the catch a gain of 26. Looking down the middle of the field, you're right, this looked like it was intercepted. Holmes running step for step with the tight end. But Daryl Strong did a great job of finding the football and jumping to catch it. He's 6'5" to begin with, and he timed his jump beautifully on that huge catch for a first down. A fresh set of downs for the Steelers. McCoy. What did I say? Steelers? <laughs> same city, you know. They play in the They're same playing stadium. like the Steelers. 10-7 yeah. <laughs> Pittsburgh. They've made good use of Stevens Howling. What a give huge throw. A blow. What a huge throw that was. Not was only it? does it get them four more downs, but it gets them the field position edge now. Even if they don't score, they have a chance to really put West Virginia on the long field. Bostic again with time. 
Throws underneath, will pick up a couple. It's interesting as we saw those numbers for Pat Bostic. Last week in the game against South Florida, he had an excellent first half. Played about as consistent as he played all season. Came out in the second half and had three interceptions. Two of them were returned for touchdowns. One was returned to the one yard line and they ended up losing that game at home to South Florida. Tonight, just the opposite. Struggled in the first half, a couple of interceptions. Playing much better so far in the second half tonight. Another huge third down. Can the Panthers convert again? McCoy is back in. Bostic will go to the shotgun. Third and seven. They need to reach the 35. Blitz coming. Little flanker screen. And they'll lose three. Trying to get it out to Stevens Howling in the flat. But again, the fact that they hit that last third down pass to Strong, if their punter, Dave Brightis, does his job here, they have a chance to pin West Virginia and Jared Brown way back and force them to go the long field. You're right. If nothing else, they picked up 26 yards in field position. Vaughn Rivers, who had one of those big turnovers, is deep. Brightus will punt. And Pitt being very smart here, trying to use up all the time off that play clock. Those seconds are going to turn out to be very valuable, perhaps. And a great kick. The Panthers will down it at the three. We'll take you back to 1988 for West Virginia's only national title try. Our good hands flashback presented by Allstate. Lou Holtz and Don Nealon brought out their team's third play of the game. West Virginia quarterback Major Harris separated his left shoulder. It was never the same the rest of the way. They couldn't run the option to the left. Tony Rice had a big game. That was to the Rocket Ishmael for a 29-yard score. Notre Dame won at 34-21, captured its 11th national championship. The West Virginia people will tell you to this day, Major Harris is healthy. They win that game. Well, I'll tell you what, Pat White's not healthy now, and I don't think that this game should be on Jared Brown's shoulders. I think you need Steve Slayton and Owen Schmidt and the guys that have been there and proven themselves to really step up right now if you're a Mountaineer. Somebody's got to. Brown on the keeper. Out to the 14-yard line. That should be a first down and give him some breathing room. That's the first run he's made since he's come into the game where there wasn't a big yeah. hesitation in whatever he was trying to do. That was just called from the sideline. No read, no option, no decision. Just catch it and go. But I, again, I think Steve Slayton is the guy now who is uh, who needs to step up for West Virginia. And the offensive line, they've got to do their job as well. Fake to Slayton. Complete pass out to the 20, caught by West Lyons. And Lyons was fighting for another first down. West Virginia also trying to pick up the tempo here a little bit. Look at that. Steve Slayton, seven carries, four yards. Last week against UConn, I don't even know, how, this is amazing to me. They ran the ball for 517 yards, yeah. and he only had 54. He's got to get some tonight. Brown again, this time across the 25 to the 26. I think one of the biggest stories of this game has been the play of the defensive front. Really, the whole front seven, but particularly the defensive front of the University of Pittsburgh. I mean, these guys up front have controlled the line of scrimmage. This West Virginia offensive line pretty much had their way with everybody this season, but they are having a difficult time opening up running lanes against this pit defense tonight. Got enough for the first down. Brown, Fumble, that's a ball. Lost the ball. That's a fumble. Pitt has it. And how appropriate, Tommy Duhart, who got called for the costly yeah. penalty in the first half that set up a West Virginia touchdown, not only gets the sack, but gets the fumble as well. He just drops this. Yep, he dropped the football. Pat White dropped it in the first half. Jarrett Brown dropped it in the second half. So three times combined, the West Virginia quarterbacks have put the ball on the ground. 
there is a sense of doom in this stadium, and rightfully so, because the Mountaineers are being outplayed by Pitt. And we've said all year, if they don't make mistakes, nobody beats them. They've made a bunch of them tonight. Well, again, what does Pitt have to do to have a chance tonight? Run the football, which they've done with McCoy and Stevens Holland. They had to tackle well, which they've done, and they've got to force turnovers. And when West Virginia does not protect the football, they struggle. They lost their one game to South Florida with six turnovers. Two very close games to Cincinnati and Louisville. They were loose with the football. Every other game, they were good, and they blew people out. They are struggling tonight with three turnovers. And they can't afford to give up a touchdown. Bostic to the corner, knocked away, incomplete. That was a great piece of defense by Antonio Lewis. On a bigger wide receiver, and he just maneuvered for position. You can look at him. He's just trying to box out like he's getting up yep. for a rebound. That was Daryl Strong, 6'5", 265, just boxing out. And then he's going to try to go up and get the rebound. And Antonio Lewis wouldn't let him get boxed out. I mean, <laughs> he just said, I'm not going to get boxed out. You're bigger, but I'm quicker. I'm getting around you, and I'm going to get this rebound. And that was a heck of a job. Third down, six yards to go. McCoy. Dives for a first Boy, down. I'll tell you what, this guy reminds me so much of Noshawn Marino that we saw at Georgia. These two guys run in a very similar fashion. They run with power. They, they run with speed. You know, West Virginia's defense has only allowed Coming into tonight, five 100-yard rushers in the last 36 games. Well, they make that six because now LaShawn McCoy, 30 carries, 126 yards. He's put on a show, and it's first and goal. We're going to have to call a timeout. Play clock down to five. But the clock is definitely on the side of the Pitt Panthers right now. Right now, so is everything else. 10-7 pit, 8.30 left. Pat White trying to see if he can handle a football with that dislocated thumb on his non-throwing hand. This was during the uh, timeout. Well, and what West Virginia needs more than Pat White right now is they need their defense to hold Pittsburgh out of the end zone and force a field goal attempt here. It's first and goal on the six. McCoy. Got no three. Two possessions ago, Pittsburgh had a chance to take a two-score lead and a very questionable holding call on wide receiver Oderic Turner, number 88, wiped out a touchdown run by LaShawn McCoy. This would have put Pitt up 17 to 7. They had to settle for a field goal attempt, which was missed, and therefore it's still a three-point game. Can they extend it to a two-score lead on this possession? Collins is the up back, McCoy, the deep man. Second and goal. McCoy. Push back maybe from the yard and a half line. Magro was the first guy on the tackle. West Virginia, all they have to do, all he says, is win this game. They were favored by four touchdowns coming in as the number two team in the country in the BCS standing. They win, they go to a national championship game in New Orleans, but they're not winning. The Pitt Panthers in this bitter rivalry have a 10-7 lead. It's a play of the season right here for the West Virginia defense. They've got a tackle in as the up back. 70, Dominic Williams, McCoy behind him. McCoy, turn back at the one. <laughs> Pat Lazier was in there. And Dave Wanstead, I don't know how those crutches have held together for the entire game. And here comes the field goal team. Gunner Lee missed a chip shot the last time for him, a chip shot. 
This one is from 18. Equivalent of an extra point for a six-point lead. This would mean West Virginia would need a touchdown. And that's exactly what it means. The Panthers have delivered, but West Virginia is still alive with that goal line stand. They are down by six. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Allstate, proud sponsor of college football. Are you in good hands? He just joined us. Surprise, 13-7. Pit over West Virginia. Holly Rowe, what do you have? Pat White is just desperate on the sideline right now, trying to get back in this game. He just took some snaps from under center. He is now warming up his throwing hand. I just saw him tell the trainer, I'm fine. I'm okay. He's in an extraordinary pain every time that thumb that's dislocated on his right hand touches the ball. But, guys, he has got the most determined look on his face. He is trying everything he can. He's desperate to get back in. But Holly, why is he taking snaps under the center with the bad thumb? They've been in the shotgun every snap tonight. Todd, I think he wanted to see if he could withstand the pain of the thumb getting hit. Noel Devine steps oh. feet down to the 33-yard line. I say if Pat White can go, you put him in the game right now. If he says he's good to go, you put him in right now. Well, this play should go nuts because you need a spark. You need a leader. You need number five in the football game right now. Well, Noel Devine just gave him 47 yards on the kick return. If Pat White comes back in this ball game, this is the kind of thing legends come from. The they, crowd will tell you. They want that told us from the pit side. This is the game where legends are made. He told us the story of Pete Gonzalez, a quarterback for Pitt, who won this game in his only years as a starter. Well, legends are made for the Mountaineers as well. Pat White with a dislocated thumb back on the field. First and 10 from the Pitt 33-yard line. Back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Scott McKillop, who has done such an unbelievable job as a middle linebacker for this team, leads the nation in tackles. And Pitt knew they had to tackle every yeah. time. They had to make one. They'd better do it. Yeah, Paul Rhodes, their defensive coordinator, has to be thrilled with the way his defense has played tonight. He said, we've got to be in the right spot with the right technique, and then we must tackle well. And they have done that extraordinarily well tonight. White on second and ten. Gives it to Slayton. Slayton picks his way to the 28. Let's take you back to the injury. And right now, it looks like this is four down territory. Well, this was a freaky injury. He put his right hand on his center's back, and somehow his thumb got twisted up in there. And before he hit the ground, that thumb was dislocated. Very painful injury. He had ice on it to end the first half. He's warmed up the whole second half, and he's back in the game right now. Third and five, if you throw it, Reynad is in the slot on the right. He is White's favorite receiver. White goes in that direction. Diving forward, it's going to be fourth and about three. Well, here's the decision. You've already had your clutch field goal kickers already missed two. Yep. Do you go for it here? I would. Well, I think Rich Rodriguez agrees with you. I don't think he wants to take a chance. 427. You've had a tough time stopping LaShawn McCoy yeah. running the football. Pat White's in the game. Let him make a play. Fourth and three. Got Schmidt and Slayton in the backfield with him. The national championship might hinge on this play. Slayton, he didn't get it. No, he did. He wasn't even close. McKillop was there to make a tackle. Sort of an odd call, don't you think? Well, it's a it's a read for Pat White. And I think if you saw Rich Rodriguez's voice, his mouth there, he was saying, why didn't you pull it? I think he thought Pat White would pull that ball out and keep it. 
But it's a read for Pat White. If he feels that that end is coming down or going up the field, he's going to give the ball in. Right there, it looks like he's got a yep. crease. If they hold their blocks, but McKillop beat the block of the center, Mike Dent, and made the tackle short of the first down. He's done it all night. He's done it all season. Maybe the play of the year for the Pitt defense. Now can Pitt work on the clock? West Virginia has all its timeouts left. Should they have to use them? McCoy, the deep man in the eye, gets about four. The good news for West Virginia, if you're searching for some, is the fact that their defense forced the field goal on their last possession. So it's still a six-point game. They don't need to score twice. They need to get a stop here, and they can use their timeouts if they have to, but they just need one touchdown to tie or possibly win this football game. That one touchdown, though, is looking harder and harder to come by seeing that they only have one the whole night so far. They'll give it to Collins, the fullback, and he is straightened up at the line of scrimmage. Collins, the ball it will carries. be third and long. Morty Ivey led the defensive charge. Did West Virginia use a timeout? I think they did. Yep, they used one. Good call right there. Yeah. It's third and long. Don't let that clock run off too much. Another huge play coming up. <laughs> Look like a man playing with boys. Number two will be revealed during the Capital One Bowl. Number one during the Rose Bowl. Both presented by City on ABC. Yeah, because of that longer timeout, Pitt was out of their huddle and showed their formation very early. West Virginia should be pretty locked in. If I'm West Virginia, I'm making sure I cover the tight end right here if they do throw the football. McCoy on the pitch. Wow. First down. What a call. Yes, it was. And a late flag at the end of the play. Great call by Matt Cavanaugh, the offensive coordinator, but a holding. That's the second holding penalty that has just killed and the it's, pit offense. It's going to be on the same guy. Oh, Derek Turner. Oh, my goodness. What a great play call, though. Holding. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. Well, the other one looked like a phantom call. Let's take a look at this. Well, let's take a look and see. Oh, Derek Turner, number 88, right here are his hands on the outside. That's the key. And right here, you see the official looking right in there. He's watching the whole time. If those hands are outside, they're going to call holding. If they're inside on the shoulder pads, they won't. I mean, the guy's not fighting to get off the play. Oh, Derek Turner in the right position but if those hands are outside instead of inside he's going to get that call what a costly costly penalty and it was a brilliant play call oh, great play call. they showed another play that they had not called the entire game so now it's third and very long Boston way too high and Turner wanted a holding call and not oh, only was it way too high but it was incomplete which stops the clock so West Virginia gets to keep their two timeouts man oh man unbelievable Dave Wanstad is just beside himself with with the the calls now how about this one was his receiver held on this play Lewis has a hold of the oh. jersey oh. and there's no call there that's what and Dave Wanstad's right, calling for right in front of Dave oh. Wanstad you don't think that'll light him up my goodness Brightus comes on to punt Vaughn Rivers is deep. A shot at a national championship low is kick. resting on all this stuff. Very Vaughn low. Rivers on the bounce. Gets to the 46-yard line. Nine-yard return. How about Missouri, Oklahoma? Here's an update from Reese. All right, guys, checking in on that game, and the running game is going for the Sooners. Allen Patrick bursting through the Missouri defense in a 14-14 game in the third. Patrick would take it 40 yards inside the five, and from there, number 23 would do it again. Sooners up 21-14 on college football final tonight. You are going to get some spirited reaction to those holding calls, guys. I would imagine three minutes to go in this game. 
Pat White with the Mountaineers chance at a championship is on the line. And he's taken down from behind at the 47-yard line. You just can't say enough about the tackling of this pit defense. They've been great, haven't they? John Clearman, the, the defensive end again. It looks like Pat White is going to slip through there and make a big play, and he's tripped up for a one-yard game. The 100th edition of the backyard brawl is as good as any they've ever played. Raynaud open. Darius Raynaud to the pit 33 first down in West Virginia. That is their go-to guy when they throw the football. And again, you can't emphasize enough how important that the injury to Pat White was on his non-throwing hand. The left hand is fine. Flips that one out to Raynaud. And West Virginia is in Panther territory. The Mountaineers, after a gain of 20, are still alive. 2.24 to go. I will guarantee you the 60,000 West Virginia fans who came to Mountaineer Field tonight did not think no. this was going to happen. Well, In the fourth quarter, the right. party was going to be going full bore. Absolutely. I mean, and just think, last week, they clinched the Big East Championship. They clinched a BCS bowl berth. And they gained 624 yards of offense against UConn. Tonight, they've been held to under 200 yards of total offense by a 4-7 and seven Pitt Panther team. Part of that at least because of White's yes. injury, but a lot of it because of Pitt's defense. Absolutely. Both true. First down West Virginia from the 33. Plenty of time left. 2.24 on the clock. And Pat White minutes. trying to come back from an injury and build his legend at West Virginia. McKillop edges up as a middle linebacker. White takes off. Blockers in front. First down at the 21-yard line. You don't think this guy is tough? At 185 pounds with a dislocated right thumb. On a cold night, back in the game, following Steve Slayton and his center, Mike Dent, and dropping that shoulder and getting extra yards. Loses his helmet, doesn't care. He's as tough as a $2 steak. <laughs> White on the roll, throws for the end zone. Ray Nod, no. Nice coverage by Kennard Cox with him step for step. Now everybody in the stadium can breathe for a second. And Oklahoma has just scored again to go up two touchdowns on Missouri. At college campuses all over the country, they are staring at television screens and not believing what they are seeing. Number one and number two in danger of losing on the last weekend of the season. Blitz coming. And White throws. throws. Had to get rid of it. Yep. Good pressure by the pit White defense. Pat White, White did the smart blitz. thing, but that was a safety blitz. Eric Thatcher coming from his safety position to force the throw away by Pat White. Ten yards to go. You have two downs to make it. And see, this is not, you know, this is not West Virginia's forte, is, is drop back passing out of the shotgun when the team knows you're going to throw. That time they fooled him with the safety blitz. This time they might rush three and drop eight. Looks like they'll come with three. Now they show blitz and come. White lost the ball. Knocked down and tackled. This will be fourth and long. The blitz didn't get there, but he was certainly distracted by it. Yep, you're right. He took his eyes off the ball. He's got a bad right thumb. And he just wasn't able to handle it cleanly. Very fortunate he got it back. But he got it back and lost about another seven yards. So it's fourth and 17. We talked about it at the beginning. West Virginia, when they don't take care of the ball, they hurt themselves. Well, they also missed a couple field goals. A very reliable Pat McAfee. Two short misses. This game could be tied. And then they couldn't hold the ball. Pat White fumbled in the first half. And then the fumble on the kickoff return by Rivers. And then Jared Brown in for the injured Pat White fumbled as well. Three turnovers and a pair of missed field goals.
have led to this situation. Down six, a minute 40 left in the game, and fourth and 17. That pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? Oh, and that drop ball, even though they didn't lose the fumble, might have been the, the most costly of the night. Mountaineers have to reach the 11 for a first down. White throws it up. Incomplete pass, trying to get it up high for Wes Lyons, the big, rangy wide receiver. Giovanni Chappelle was there. And the Mountaineers go out on fourth down. They have two timeouts left, but Pitt can just about suck the life out of this game after they call those two. I'm really, I mean, that, this sounds crazy, but those, they had three turnovers, but that last drop ball by Pat White on That's third down. Number 28, 28 on the defense. Excess half the distance to the goal. First down. You know, they got to do something about this excessive celebration stuff. This is, this is a bitter rivalry. If somebody is going to put their hands up and celebrate, stopping somebody in that kind of situation they penalize them for it that's just stupid and, and you're and you're you're a 28 point underdog and you're four and seven and you're on the brink of the greatest win yeah. of your season and one of the greatest wins in your school's history and he's trying to tell Dave Watson I'm just celebrating with my teammates I wasn't doing anything to draw attention to myself they're just drawing too much of the joy out of this. But Pitt's got a little left over right now. The penalty moves him back to the 14. McCoy is the deep man in the eye, and he's going to get the football. And the one thing he'll do is clamp down on it. Yeah, he has to. So... The best West Virginia can hope for is getting the ball back with about 15 seconds left. Let's go to Reese. All right, guys, checking out the Big 12 championship game. Mike, you mentioned that Oklahoma had scored again. Here's how it happened. Chase Daniels' pass is tipped, and there he is again. Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, Curtis Lofton, going down close to the five-yard line. And from there, Sam Bradford, who finds Jermaine Gresham, who leads the nation in touchdown catches by a tight end. And number one is down by two touchdowns. And number two is down to a minute and 28 seconds left. And I think all. if you're three, four, five, you're lucky <laughs> yeah. you're not playing right yeah. now. Yeah, there's a whole lot of teams. Ohio State finished their season before Thanksgiving with their win over Michigan. And would Ohio State, would Ohio State and Georgia move up? Well, I think Ohio State certainly will move up. You know, the Georgia one is. Uh, there, there's still some question about that. Virginia Tech with a big win today, ACC championship. LSU wins the SEC championship. You know, there's going to be some sentiment to say, how do you send Georgia to the championship game over an LSU team that won the SEC championship? Second down, McCoy. Mountaineers trying to hold him up and take the ball. They will use a timeout. It will be third down and long, but the Mountaineers... Now they're letting the clock run. I guess it really doesn't matter. You may take the timeout. Well, the clock showed the scoreboard shows West Virginia with no timeouts. They showed two before the series started. So I don't know how that happened. Play clock has expired. with 45 to go. This will be the biggest disappointment, I think, in West Virginia yeah. football history. To beat a team you really despise over the years, that you're favored by four touchdowns over, that obviously you have shown you're more talented than over the course of the season. But that's why it's such a huge win for Pitt if they win this game. They have done everything they had to do to win. Yeah. 
McCoy stacked up. Now, when they mark the ball ready for play, there's a 25-second clock. It has not started yet. Wow. Well, that took a long time. Now, if you're pitting, do you take the chance to punt, or do you take a safety? I think you can run around. I mean, you're gonna, you're not, you can take a penalty here and then not have to snap the ball until there's three or four seconds. Right. And then just run around. That's, That's what safety. they're gonna do. Nope. Smart play. Just run the clock. Don't run out of the end zone. Over. The Pitt Panthers have pulled a stunning upset over the West Virginia Mountaineers and just denied them a place in a national championship game. The last time they did this, beat a number two team, was when they knocked off Georgia in the 82 Sugar Bowl. A huge win for Dave Wonstadt that is going to send 60,000 plus home not believing what they just saw. Holly is with Dave Wanstead. Holly. Coach, you said at halftime you liked your team's will to win. How would you describe that will tonight? 60 minutes of it. And I said we needed one play. I think that's about all we made in the second half on offense is one. And I tell you, our defense played phenomenal. The players, coaches, did a great job. Great job. This is, is, is as rough as our season was. This, uh, this ends it on a good note. Your defense was exceptional. Coach, so, what would you say was the key to them tonight? Uh, I, th I thought our coaches did a great job, and the players just believed in the scheme, and, and we're getting a little faster. Two years ago, I came down here, and I said, ask me what I had to do at halftime with the team. Tell them, I said, run faster. We're running faster, and we'll get faster. All right, thanks, Coach. Todd, your thoughts? <laughs> Tremendous defense by the Pitt Panthers. I, I didn't think they could shut down this West Virginia offense. Yes, Pat White was hurt. Steve Slayton wasn't hurt. And Darius Raynaud weren't hurt. Noel Devine wasn't hurt. The Pitt defense was awesome. Pitt wins at 13 and 9. Sports Center coming up next over on ESPN News. Post game extra. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our entire ESPN crew. Thanks for watching everybody this is Mike Patrick good night